Lauren. Good morning. How are you? So actually right before this stream, my view CLI somehow got corrupted, but I just installed it and now I have uh, the view project that I'm going to be using for the stream that's getting set up right now. So basically I have a view course coming out <laughs> a view course coming out very soon um, on YouTube. So I wanted to make a couple other view videos to go along with it um, because it doesn't cover view router and view X. So I thought I would dive into view router today. Um, do at least one stream about view router and some about view X and testing and all that kind of stuff. How many channel points do I need to get the dark reader? Uh, I did, so I did have it on my other laptop, but when I change laptops, I guess I don't have it. Well, since I'm waiting for the view install, for some reason it's taking forever. Let me go ahead and get a dark reader. There's dark theme. Doesn't have good reviews though. Oh, here's Dark Reader with Darth Vader. It must be good. Let's see. Three million users. Dark mode with every website. Take care of your eyes. Adjust the brightness, contrast. That's awesome. Actually, I don't think I had this exact extension before, but this looks good. All right, add extension. Sweet, that's awesome, thank you. Okay, so why is this taking so long? Something's wrong with my NPM. It's like the only thing that's slow on this computer. I have no idea why. Anyway, um, Node has been very slow for me lately. You mean NPM or Node? That's the empty repo that I'm going to push code in later. Nothing there yet. And then, so anyway, I wanted to talk about View uh, Router 4, which you can find at the next.router.vuejs.org site. Um, there are a couple, I guess a couple interesting updates. I think um, most of the updates don't change how you use view router just in general components you're still using you know you're still using router links and router views and you still have your uh, JavaScript router files so a lot of it's the same um, they did change the API to match the view API which is a little bit different, but not really. And then they added in a few new features and there are also some nice shorthands, um, like being able to return a Boolean um, from your router guards. So it basically takes out a little bit of boilerplate if you use that kind of thing before. So, yes, okay, it's done. So let me go into my view project that I created. Um, by the way, if you want to see what's been updated, it's kind of nice to read the change log sometimes on GitHub. And you can also follow the team and their blog and uh, catch some of the updates and stuff. All right. So, oh, extension shortcuts. Yeah, I'll look at that after the stream, thanks. Okay, so I have, yeah, I'm in here. And first, I guess I'll rename my branch. And I can't remember the command for it, but I know it's here somewhere. Yeah, here we go. Rename my branch to main. All right, so now I can open my code. And I'm gonna put this in a... Wait. 
I'm going to put this in its own uh, desktop window. Oh yeah, that's code from the last project. Okay. So, there we go. That's my new project. I basically said yes to everything going through the Vue CLI to create this. I added the store and the router and testing and everything so I can keep using this app. All right, and now I can do, it automatically installed my node modules. Why is it doing uppercase? I don't have cap locks on, so I don't know why it's doing uppercase right now. Did I do something on my keyboard? Um, yeah, weird. I have no idea what's going on. Well, I can't really use my terminal. Sorry, one second. I'm going to unplug this keyboard and plug it back in. That's weird, I tried turning off and on cap locks and it's still, there we go. All right, npm run serve, I can serve up my view project. All right, and view three is so fast. Okay, let me go localhost 8080. Yeah, that was weird and Sometimes I get keys mixed up because I have a bunch of different layers on my keyboard and Yeah, but I've never had cap locks frozen in place like that. That's really strange uh, Okay There we go So there's our default view page. It already has you know the basic routing set up a little bit um, Yeah, let's see there's this. All right, and let me switch these around. There we go. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is create some pages. So my router all already gives me these two main routes. And I'm just using the default history mode instead of hash mode. Which is working because you know Vue's running a development server for me right now. Use and pro two. I've never heard of that. And pro two. I'm guessing that's a keyboard. Oh, okay. And do you have it without keycaps? Okay, I can't look at keyboards right now, but I'll take a look at it later. I'm very much addicted to keyboards. All right, so yeah, here's my um, routes. I have two basic routes, home and about. Uh, I think I'm just gonna leave these. I'll get rid of the comments. I'm not gonna really talk about um, lazy loading and stuff like that. So, get rid of this, and yeah, I'm just going to do a regular component here, say about, and then here I'm going to, oops, do this as about. All right. So I have two components and these are going to be components you don't have to be authorized to see. So I'm going to leave those alone I think and then I'm going to have, I'm just going to add a new one and this one will be a login page 
and then I'm going to have some components that you have to be authorized to see. And I already made a list. So uh, let's see, dashboard.view and no one does the one that you want. Have you tried the Ergodocs? They have one called the Moonlander. I have the, the regular Ergodocs right now with no keycaps at all. Um, they also have this the new Moonlander. I mean, not no keycaps. What am I talking about? Blank keycaps. So I can put whatever I want there. Um, I mean, I could anyway, but it gets confusing if you put something different there that's not written on the keycap. Anyway, uh, let me do a reports page. And then if I get around to it, I'll make a settings page too. Okay, so in here I can get rid of the, the old hello world. And here I'll just do H1, and this will be home page. Alright. Okay, so that's the home page. Um, all of these pages will be connected to the router, so I'm putting them all in views. Okay, and now I can copy this, and basically I'm just going to do the same thing for all of these pages and just make a basic page just so I can work on the routing. Um, actually, yeah, because I'm connecting them to the router, I do want a name, so I'll call that reports. And I don't, oops, nope. Okay, um, I don't care about this class. I'll just leave that alone. Um, all right, dashboard. So let me dashboard and let's see uh, settings. Oops. And settings. Okay, one more, and then log in. Okay. Ergodocs. Yeah, that's one problem that I had um, with the Ergodocs is I feel like it's made for bigger hands. Like, um, I don't know how to describe it. I guess not. Keyboards aren't really made for, you know, average-sized girl hands. I think they're made for average-sized guy hands, so it does feel a little bit bigger than I'd want. But actually, the Moonlander is kind of made adjustable, or some of the keys are adjustable, so it's better for different size of hands. Oh, the Ampros for people with smaller hands. I'll have to check it out. I was actually going to order a smaller keyboard that I could more easily pack because this is not easy to pack and bring around with me. Um, okay, so yeah, so I have all my pages. That's good. Now I'm going to hook these up to the router, all these new pages that I made. So I'm going to Let's see, one, two, four. There we go. And this one will be um this dashboard, maybe I can leave like that. And dashboard. Yeah, so I'm gonna import these components and then I'm actually gonna make a wrapper for um, a layout wrapper for them. So I'm gonna call this dashboard 
and then this one would be, these are in no particular order. Oh wait, this should be lowercase. And then this one, now settings. And this should be settings. And then I do have to import these. Wait, I'm missing one. Oh, reports. Okay. Oops, I messed this up. Oops. Okay. So now I have to import all of those components. Right. I can't wait till we have AI that does most of this typing for us. That will be so nice. Um, has anyone here gotten to try the, uh, what was it? the VS Code extension for basically it's kind of like an AI autocomplete I guess you could call it um, let's see reports and then dashboard oh I didn't catch the this one all right so those are all my routes. Uh, there's one more folder I'm going to make. Wait, not a file. Let me make a folder and this will be layouts. It's a smaller app, so I guess I didn't need its own folder, but I'm just gonna create a folder. And this one will be, let's see, new file. Let's call this dashboard layout. All right. Oh, GitHub Copilot. Oh, you tried it, Marvel? How was it? I'm still on the waiting list. I haven't been able to get into it. I always put my routes in a different file. Yeah, I don't have that many routes yet. All right, so now I have all these different pages that I can uh, wait. A different app um, yeah I have all these different pages that I can navigate to so I guess if I wanted to I could do slash settings or you know any of the other pages connected to the router okay but I want to contain all of my routes that people have to be logged in for I want to kind of contain them in one wrapper so I'm making this dashboard layout component and let me just do template and then oh wait for this project I am going to go into my workspace and change the tab setting someone told me last time I could do this just for JavaScript which I haven't done yet but I need to. Alright. So I changed it to two tab size of two spaces for the project since I'm working in JavaScript. And yeah. Now it will be two spaces. Anyway, so let me just do. I guess I'll do just an empty div for right now. Um, and then let's do um, some kind of header or nav or something. So do, do top nav just to, to pretend like we have a top navigation. And I can replace that with navigation in a minute. All right. 
And now I'm going to put a router view in here. So child routes can display through this wrapper. Okay, so now I have my wrapper and now I'm going to import it. Um, yeah, let me put it here and I'm gonna, this is dashboard layout. Yeah, I called it dashboard layout. And this isn't from views, it's in layouts. Layout. All right. And now, this is pretty much how I, I always set up my auth routes is, I mean, depending on the project, but I'll almost always have something like this. So I'm gonna make my, uh, actually, let me do path, and this one will be just at forward slash. Um, no, I guess I already have a home path here. So uh, let's call this dashboard for right now. And name is, actually I don't need a name. So uh, let me use a component here. And I'm gonna call the component, or I'm gonna use the dashboard layout component. And I don't need a name because I'm not going to access this component directly, but I'm gonna use children. So let me have an array of children and inside the children, this is where I want all of these other pods that I have. Oops. Uh, okay. So now I have my nested, my children here. All right, so let me try this if I go to it in the browser. How do you get the cursor like Vim and VS Code? Oh, there's a plugin ex or an extension. Where is it? Vim. Yeah, this one. So I have uh, this one for VS Code. My other code editors, I also use Vim. And then what's wonderful is that there's also Vimium in the browser. And note taking software, almost any good modern software has some kind of a Vim plugin or extension or something that somebody's hacked to be able to use Vim in it. So it's quite nice. Okay, so I can go to my regular routes. Now let's see what it, what happens when I go to dashboard. Sweet. All right, so I do get top nav and let me see, oops. Um, okay, so it should be the path dashboard. It shows the dashboard layout component and it should be showing this one too. Let's see if that works for settings. Actually, let me get rid of that. Yeah, I had to get rid of. For some reason, if I have the forward slash here, um, it didn't register and render this component. So it just shows top nav, which is what I have in my dashboard layout here. Um, but the router view should display whatever child component the, is matched by the path. But I have to get rid of the forward slash for it to use that as the default one. Now you can see it renders my dashboard component. And if I do dashboard slash settings. Oh, that didn't work. Um, it should, 
Let's see, am I... I'm importing that. Yeah, it should be importing correctly. Let me see if I have an error. No match was found for location. Dashboard dash settings. Oh, it's too much. Okay. Dashboard dash settings. Let's try the, let's try the other route reports and see. I'm guessing it's not gonna work either. The Views on View podcast where they talk about Vim. No, I haven't. It's been a little while since I listened to Views on View. Oh, bye Richard me. Thanks for joining. All right. Um, yeah, let's see. What's wrong with this? So, uh, first of all, oh, okay. I have the view... Uh, dev tools, but these are only the dev tools for view version 2. So first of all, I need to install the view version 3 dev tools um, Which if you haven't used them yet, they did upgrade to um, Or they did update them. So now they include dev tools for view router and view X again Okay, so let's see view JS. Um, it's this beta one. That's the one that supports view three. Okay, add extension has been added. Okay, good. Okay, so let me exit out of my dev tools and go back in. There we go. Now I have a view tab because I'm using view three. Um, you'll notice it's still not quite as up-to-date as um, the old View 2 DevTools. I mean, there aren't quite as many features, but it still has, it has most everything now. Um, and they're still updating it all the time. Okay, so there are my routes. And then... Okay, it's showing the route that I'm on right now, but that's not registered. So let me go here. So it does show settings. Oh, I see. So even though these are children, I see, I know what I did. Hi, Aru Rufu. How are you? Um, okay, so I actually didn't know, didn't realize this, but I think I know what what uh, what it's going on right now. Okay, so I was trying to go to dashboard dash settings, but let me just try to go to settings. Yep, and now it works. So basically, what I just now realized, uh, which is kind of interesting. Is that if I do, I think it's if I do a forward slash at the beginning, um, it's, it's its own path. So this will just be at settings. Whereas if I don't start with a forward slash, then I think I have to access it with dashboard dash settings. Um, which is kind of, kind of nice if you need that functionality because before I think actually in previous versions of View Router, maybe I'm not remembering correctly, but I don't think it did that before. Yeah, so now it's at dashboard dash settings. So now there's no dash settings, so it's at dashboard dash settings. There you go. Okay, so if you want it to be nested inside of this path, then you don't have to start with a forward slash here. And if you want it to be its own path, then start with a forward slash. But I think I do want it to be its own path because it is kind of weird prefixing everything with dashboard. Um, basically, I want everything to be nested inside of this layout component. 
but not necessarily um, yeah, but not necessarily nested inside the path. Uh, just waiting to get started on Paramount and Chef Anne. Oh, okay. Um, Alright, so if you don't know, this is my co-worker. I didn't realize that. So, I don't know if you're reminding me that I have to go to work soon or... You're just dropping in to see a view stream, but welcome to the stream. All right, so now I lost my track here. <laughs> okay, so I have these routes, and these are the routes that I want the user to be authenticated for, basically. Um, and then I have uh, my dashboard layout. And I'm gonna put my navigation in here. So let me get rid of all these. Go into my home. Okay. And get out of here. And now I'm gonna go into my app.view, which is where my navigation is right now. And I'm gonna keep this navigation here. Um, and then have a different. Well, actually, I might. Actually, I'm gonna have two layouts. So a dashboard layout, and then I'm gonna have, I guess I'll just call it a guest layout. Um, that way I can have two different navigations based off of a layout, if they're logged in or not. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you for that. All right. One thing that does drive me crazy is not having um, an empty line at the end for some reason. Okay, so this will be the guest layout and this is the authenticated layout. Now each one will have its own navigation so I can take them out of the app and just have the regular router view in the app. Um, and now I'm going to put this in here and okay so the guest layout this is going to be perfect I think um, except I do want login so someone can log in if they're not logged in all right so now I have a login page and <laughs> All right, so thanks. All right, I'm not really the best, but yeah, I, I try to get my work done. Um, okay, so I have my guest layout. I'm completely using my train of thought now. So let me put my authenticated log or routes here. So one thing I do want to have is some kind of logout route, which I, doesn't actually exist yet, but um, actually I should put this last, probably. Yeah, some kind of logout and then reports, which I'm doing different pages here because I want to have different types of users also. Now this is taking a bit of setup to actually get to the point of having all these different things, but it's getting there. All right. And then this will be, let's see, just a regular dashboard page, I guess. So, all right. I think that that'll be good. Uh, let's see the state of the app right now. Okay. This is an about page. That's good. It's because, um, yeah, the guest layout isn't actually imported anywhere, so I have to import that into router. So let me do this. Um, actually, oops. There. Guest layout. And 
now I'm going to route these routes too. So I can do, let's say, path. I'm ready to take my son to school. All right, Carl, thanks for joining. Um, is O'Reilly a good platform? Um, O'Reilly has some good books. I don't know about any platform they have. Um, it's one of the best coding book publishers. Wait, I think I've used their platform before. I can't remember now. Um, but my favorite, my favorite books are the No Starch Press ones. Um, I don't know how good their books for JavaScript actually are, but they have really, really good like computer science, uh, security, Python, lots of stuff like that. Okay, so wait, so path. All right, let me do this for path here, and I can do components, and this will be my guest layout. And now let me do children again, and this will be that. All right, and now I can nest all of these stranded components inside here. Right. There we go. So I have all of those components and I think that should work. Let me see. Yeah shows all the different pages. Let me just fix this little thing in the router here. What was that? Oh, that scared me. It was a calendar notification. I should turn those off. Um, it's like when I set up a new computer, it takes, it takes about a month because you download all the programs and install stuff, set stuff up, and then you realize almost every day that there's stuff that you missed and there's settings you want to configure and there's stuff you want to change and it's a big process. Um, what was I just doing? Oh yeah, I was going to fix uh, this. So pipe. For a while on this keyboard I couldn't remember where I had put pipe. Uh, let's see. And pipe. Actually, I don't need it at the last one. Okay, and now here, I can just use a pipe. All right, and now that's better. So here's my unauthenticated part of the app, and then if I'm authenticated, let's just go to any page, settings, and now I have this whole different nav bar. Oh, logout isn't actually a route. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll just mock logout for right now and send them to homepage. It's not actually logging them out anywhere, just sending them back to the other routes. And then what I could do is for login, um, I could do a redirect. But this is just kind of mocking authentication, I guess. I always use stuff like, yeah, Brad's pretty great. I'm glad he's back with this channel and seeming to be doing well. Actually, I think I posted like two, maybe just one video on his channel, which was super exciting because I've been following him for a long time for him to let me do that. Uh, okay, so login takes me nowhere. Oh, yeah, that's right. So I can do settings because log, log out isn't a route. So I just basically send them back to the homepage. All right, so that's basically how, um, yeah, that's basically how I would set up maybe authenticated and unauthenticated routes. 
and then I would need to check off. So I do have a list of what I wanted to do in the stream. I didn't get quite as much done as I wanted, probably because my I had to fix my VCLI and stuff. So I have my wrappers. Oh yeah, so I want to check off for these routes. Um, so if you've seen, oh, that's a VCLI. So navigation guards, they don't have one under essentials, but they do have navigation guard documentation here. And it's basically, so when you're navigating to each route, you can basically use something like hooks. I guess it is a hook. Um, but so when I click on about, I can make a function run before it goes to the about page or after it already lands on the about page. I can set a function or I can hook a function up to my router to run based off of those triggers when I'm about to route to a new page or when I'm already, when I just landed on a new page. So, um, the one that's usually used is this router.beforeEach. And this is global, so I could globally connect to my router. So here's my here are my routes. And then I could attach a before each to this router here. Um, let me actually do that. But this will run on every single route before each and then make it a function and I think oh it's giving me hints here that's cool so there's two from and it should be next I think yeah. all right and then oops sometimes I get my layers wrong and then this will run before every single route, which I can just, uh, let me just log the two object. All right. Um, this means the two is basically the route that I'm about to go to. It gives me all the information, the metadata about that route. So if I go here, um, from is defined, but never used. I'm actually going to turn off this error. So it's kind of, yeah. Mm. So just because I'm developing right now, so I put that at a zero and I shouldn't receive errors for that anymore, maybe. Oh, I think I'd have to rerun my server mm. to get rid of the error. What is metadata? Um, it's basically data about data. Um, I don't know how else to describe it. So, yeah, basically all of these pieces of information about my route. Um, let's see, error from access mark. I'll just, yeah, I don't know, I'll log these or get rid of them. Or, Whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay, so yeah, here's my log, and you can see I have all of this information about the place that I'm going to route from and whether or not I was redirected, if there's query params, the path, and um, you know which routes were matched, and then meta so I can pass things into the route if I want to which I'm going to do in a second. And yeah, that's pretty much if I want this to run before I route to any route, um, which is not exactly what I want to do right now. Um, but if I just want something to check for my auth routes, like I want to check authorization only for these routes, I can any single route or any group of routes, I can attach a before each directly here. So, like here, I can also do uh, before each. And this should be a function. And yeah. And let's 
see if this works. So console.log. Alright. Can we use debugger instead of yeah, we can use the debugger. Um, but then I have to I have to use two for something here, so. Um, just because it, it's going to throw me an error if two isn't used, so I'm just using it in the console. Okay, so here, now there's no log here, right? But if I go to an auth page, it should be logging. Let's see. Okay, so router dot before each. So I'm doing the for each here, and actually, yeah. Let me just use the the object shorthand here for functions. Um, I think that works. Let's see. Okay, so I'm not using the I'm sorry, not using before each correctly. So let's see, router dot before each global. Yeah. Oh, before enter. That's right. So for individual routes, it's called before enter. All right. So. Um, yeah, but if I want to do it globally, it's before each, which makes sense. Vue puts a lot of thought into their naming conventions. All right, so here, yeah, so now it is logging out that, and you can see my path is slash settings. Um, instead of writing everything, yeah, authentication is hard to, hard to do. But anyway, either way, you know, whether you use Amazon Cognito or Auth0 or anything like that, you're still going to have to set up um, your how you handle Auth on the front end. So Cognito gives you a way, you know, to abstract it away from your Auth on the back end. But, you, you know, from Cognito, you'll still be getting your tokens. You'll still have to, you know, have your before enter and you'll make calls to check their um, authorization and authentication and uh, refresh the token and all that stuff. So, you know, whether you use a service or not, you'll still be doing stuff like this in Vue. Hey, so Homeless is asking about route guards. Yeah, that's exactly... Um, what this is in view. Um, but basically, I'm going to set up a check myself. One person was telling me that it's not good to store JWTs in local storage because then you can access it with JavaScript and it's not good. Um, I've read a little about that, but you know, there's ways to. I think all places are vulnerable, like whether you store it in local storage or um, cookies or anywhere else. And anyway, your application is going to need the token. Um, some ways that I've read that, you know, are better, which is to make it expire after maybe like 15 minutes. And then you can use a refresh token to make it last longer if you want. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's any perfect way to store a JWT. Because I read some places you should store it here and some places you should store it somewhere else. And I don't... Yeah. I haven't seen any reason to not. Unless you have um, maybe some information you want to share with me. But as far as I know, because I've looked into this before, like where should where should I be storing my JWTs? Because some people tell me not to store it here or to store it there. And I haven't seen a reason to not, I guess, use local storage yet. 
Um, but yeah, if you have some article or some more information that would be good for you to share, um, you can share it in my Discord or here or wherever. All right, so I have, where was I? Oh yeah, I was making the this router guard. So before you can enter any of these routes, it has to pass through this before enter. And what I want to do is basically say, and this is probably the last thing, I wanted to get a lot more done in the stream, but this is probably the last thing I'll be able to do, so I'll have to have a part two sometime. Because I have to get to work. Um, but yeah, so basically I want to check uh, auth here, and then let users Enter if authenticated and then otherwise grab them to log in. All right. Okay, so I'm going to do an if statement here. And actually what I'm going to do first is um, on my store, I think this is an easy way to mimic being authenticated. So let's just do is authenticated and let's set it to true right now. And we can handle tokens or make a mock server or something like that later. So, yeah, let me, uh, I guess first I need to import the store. So let me do it before components. So I'll do import store from, let's see, from store. And that will import my store, which is exported from my index.js file. So I have my store and on state, I have authenticated, this is authenticated variable. So I can use my VBAC store inside my router here. And I can say, let's see, uh, if, oops, if, is authenticated so if they're logged in basically then I'm going to say next which now I need to get next from here so to from and next oh why is it next tick I guess that was autocomplete okay um, and else, let's do, wait, it's this one, there we go. Um, else, I'm going to do, two, let's see, next, oh yeah, and then I, so if I pass in nothing, this just passes them through to whatever route they wanted to go to which will be one of these routes. Um, but if I do next here, let's see, next, and then I can pass in login, and that should reroute them to login. So let's see if that works. Let's go to, let's see. Store is defined but never used. Oh, wait, I did this totally wrong. Um, here's what I meant to do is store.state, because it's on my UX state, that is authenticated. Next tick is defined but never used? Where is next tick defined? Oh, I see. Um, my VS Code is very kindly 
trying to import things, but it, since I made a mistake, it automatically created this import for me. Uh, yeah, which I don't want. So there we go. All right, so I am in my auth routes just fine and my other routes. Everything works just fine. So now let me go to, um, let me change, actually go to my VUX store. So, and change this is authenticated. Let's say I'm not authenticated. Change it to false. All right, so I can get through these routes just fine, but as soon as I start trying to go to an authenticated route, yeah, it rerouted me to login, which is cool. So I tried to go to settings and you can see it even uh, printed or it logged out the settings, but it rerouted me to login because I, um, because this is false. So yeah, so I passed in login. All right. I don't know, should I leave these comments? Yeah, I'll leave them. I don't need that comment. All right, so I have this is authenticated. And then I do want to have different user types. So basically, if you are a certain a certain user type, um, let's say for reports, you have to be an admin user, but you can be any user to access, as long as you're authenticated, you can access the dashboard and settings, but you have to be an admin um, to access reports. So, I don't know. Okay, I have like 10 minutes. So. Um, one thing that, or how I guess I've been setting this up is basically for different user roles and I don't really have a list of user roles anywhere. So I'm just going to create them here. Um, but basically with view router, you can pass in a meta object with each route and basically put whatever information you want on that and then you have access to it through the router. So for example, oh wait, let me change this to uh, true again. All right, and go back here. Settings, oh yeah, I'm not logging out anymore. That's right, so let me get rid of this real quick. And I'm going to just log out my route to, all right. So now I have my route and you can see on here, let's see, plus you can see there's this empty meta object. And so this is where view lets you pass in information to the router. So I'm going to, um, let's see, on my routes down here, for reports, I'm going to say meta, and then I'm going to do, let's say authorized users, or let me call it roles. So these are the list of roles that are able to access this route. So here, uh, let's say admin, only admins can access it. Um, let me do this. All right, and now for this, let's have another user type. Let's call these, let's call this user I don't know what to call it. Regular user, uh, standard. Let's call it standard. And standard. 
Okay. And so I would have information about the user type, basically. And here, let me just put a user object, and then I should put type. Uh, so I have a type of user standard. And then basically I would add this to the check. So if they are authenticated, now I have to check the type of user. So um, let's say if let's say if um, well I have to get this off my store so in my store I have store.state.user.type so if store.state.user.type um, so basically it should be in and let me get, um, so in here, it should show me how to get the metadata off of my router. So I think I can just access it with two, because it's the router, it's the route that I'm going to. So I want two.meta.roles, which will be an array. Um, so basically, oops, what I think I can do is, um, oops, I can do two dot meta dot roles and then see if user type is in there. And I'm not sure if this is the right syntax. I'm just kind of uh, pseudo coding this right now and getting it to work in a second. Okay. And so now I would, I would basically only want to route to the next route, you know, if they have that level of authorization. Um, and then else, uh, let's see. Log. user is not authorized for route. Okay, so let me even see if this is the right syntax. So two.meta.roles, if that exists, um, I have to make sure, I think JavaScript has a dot exists, but let me, let me see, let me look on MDN. MDN um, array exists. No, uh, not, not what I want. Oh, includes, that's it. Okay. So it's array dot includes. Okay. So let me go back. Oh wait, I think I can ray dot includes. Yeah, I can just pass in the variable. Okay. So oops. Includes. And then store.state.user.type is just a string, so I can pass that in. Okay, let me see if this is right. Two dot meta dot roles. So let me go here. Actually, it seems to be right. Let me see. No, nope, but it's not working correctly. So let's see. How do I get the meta properties? Let me find route meta fields. Here we go. 
requires off. Yeah, you can do the same thing for requires off or whatever other information. How do I access that? To that meta that requires off. Yeah. Okay. So two.meta.rules. Now here's where I think I want a debugger. Store that state that is authenticated. So that's true. Um, and then store that state that user dot type. That's true. Okay, so here I'm gonna put uh, debugger. Okay, so let's see. It should stop at that line of code. Nope. Um, anyway, let's see. I have, I can see this object two dot meta dot roles and it should be false so in the array yeah two dot meta dot roles dot includes this has to be false so it should be printing user is not authorized but instead it's just routing me all right let me get rid of that I don't know why. Why is it doing that? Oh yeah, it is. User is not authorized for app. Okay, I thought it wasn't doing that. Um, oh, and there's no next. So, there's no next, so I think that's why it's not loading any route at all. But, because I'm a standard user, I can still get to the settings page and all the other in dashboard but I shouldn't be able to get to reports only when I refresh does it say users not authorized for route okay that's an interesting um, problem let's see if I can fix it really quick Okay, so my meta fields are working. I'm using the before enter. Oh, I see. Oh. Hi, IBs. Hi, everybody. Did I get rated? Oh, hey, Rockstar74. How are you? Thanks for the raid. What were you guys working on? All right, so yeah, I, I think that's just auto moderating. I thought I turned that off, but oh well. <coughs> yeah, so I see what's happening. This before enter um, is basically only running before I enter any of these paths, but once I'm in any one of them, it doesn't run again until I try to re-enter. So I would have to basically rethink about how I'm um, architecting this because I can get to reports just fine, but let me log out and now let me go to an auth route. Yeah, and now I can get to reports. So basically what I would have to do is I could create this function somewhere else and then I would have to use it for each I could use it for each route separately unless there's some kind of flag that I can use with view to run this before enter before every single route um, I think that should be what the before each is for so router dot before each uh, let's see. 
but I don't, again, I don't think I can use it on an individual route here. Oh, I'm working on this Vue.js. Vue I mean, you can see from the title. Uh, I haven't pushed the code yet, but it's basically Vue Router 4. So I'm just working on getting um, authorization working or authentication working. The, uh, I've basically made just a whole bunch of different routes. So here's my router file. I have login home about, and right now I'm just mocking login by putting some variables in my global state. And then I want to keep um, building off of this in future streams and kind of going through all the new, new updates and features and libraries in view. A Red Sox fan. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've ever watched baseball, but it's kind of a fun, I don't know, it's a fun sport to watch live. I really like it. I don't watch it as much as I did when I was younger. Um, you were building a YouTube shorts uploader from Twitch Clips. Ah, I've never used YouTube Shorts. I've, I started seeing them pop up and I have no idea how to do those at all. Um, but that would be cool. I might actually use that if you make a tool. Alright, so yeah, I have to figure out, I need to force this before each function to run basically. And you kind of came at the end of my stream. So... Let's see. Let me see if the if that works as a before each. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I tried changing it to before each. So I could put it at a global level and just check each route. If it's an authenticated route, then um, I could check that way. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think how else could I do it. Or I could put it on every single route, which would be annoying. So I think what I should do for here then is... Uh, oh wait, I have a new idea. Okay, let me take that out of here. And... Put it here. Let's see. Uh... And router dot before each. Okay. Okay, so I have uh, this global before each that runs before every route, but I don't want it to stop people from entering these routes. So I can add another. And I wonder if I can do this. This is what I want to try. So what if I add a meta on the parent route? Will it merge with the meta details on the child routes? Um, I don't know. Let's see. Oh wait, I got rid of the wrong thing there. So does anybody know if that happens? So let me do requires auth true. And let me just see what two prints out as and see if I have the metadata there. Missing semicolon. Ah, uh, weird. I'm not using semicolons. Oh, I see, because I didn't write my code correctly. All right, so uh, router dot before each. For each, oh yeah, yeah, I have to pass in. What am I doing? I'm passing in a function to the before each. Yeah, and oh, it has to be, an, let me do an arrow function. Yeah. Thanks. All right. 
think that's good. Let's see if that works. Okay. Well, I got a new error anyway. Okay, cannot read property includes if undefined. Um, yeah, so basically if there is no meta and roles and stuff, then. But I am just going to do this to get it working for right now. Um, so it doesn't throw an error. Okay, user is not authorized for route. Even though they should be, but because um, that's just the home route. Okay, there's the settings page. And what I want to see is. Sweet! Awesome! So, what happens is I'm. So, right now I'm in the settings route. And so I have the metadata associated with settings, but I also have the metadata of any parent route. So uh, here we go. Yeah, so it merged together into this one object. So I have access to that. Sweet. All right. So what I need to do in my route is basically I want to check if it requires auth and they're authenticated, then go through this. Otherwise, log in. But if, uh, wait. Uh, let me just try this, yeah. So if um, requires auth and Where's my ampersand? I don't know where my ampersand is on this keyboard. Um, oh, what am I talking about? It's the same place it always is. Okay. Oh wait, oops. I don't know what just happened, but okay. Um, yeah, I don't know what it just did. That was weird. I accidentally hit some kind of hotkey. Alright. There we go. Uh, to may it requires auth. Yeah, so if it requires auth and they are authenticated, do this. Um, I guess I can do else if, um, like else if it two dot meta dot requires auth. So if it requires auth, and obviously they're not authenticated, because if they are authenticated, it would run this if block. Um, if it requires auth and they're not authenticated, we'll route them to login. And then the else condition, or, yeah, this is no condition, but the else block will be just next. Meaning if the route doesn't require any auth, then just send them wherever they want to go. Okay, so this should work now. Uh, what was better than expected? Were you working on something? Okay, so let me log out. Okay, so I can easily access, by the way, the user that I'm using right now, I'm just doing type standard. So I should be able to access any route except reports. So let's see. Um, I can access any unauthenticated route. Let's go to settings. And I can go to dashboards or settings. If I log out, it'll take me back to the home page. Um, and I can do 
reports, which it doesn't route me to reports because it says user is not authorized. Because basically, um, yeah, it doesn't include the user type is not the right user type for to allow access for that route because obviously the standard user is not included in this array because it only lets admin users access this route. So uh, that's pretty good. So now if I have an admin user here, dropped off at school without too much of a pain. Oh, cool. So are you working from home now? Uh, let's see. Now that I'm an admin user, I should be able to, yeah, now I can get to reports just fine. And if I'm not any user, let's see if I'm not any user type or, uh, yeah, let me just go ahead and say false for, for authenticated. Yeah, and it automatically pushed me back to login uh, because it hit this block. So it sent me back to login. Yeah, so let's see what else is on my list. Um, yeah, I think the, those are the basics. I, of course, if you're dealing with a real app, um, you know, you set the user types here that are allowed to access it, and then you'll get the user types from some kind of API, you'll get, or the user will come with a type from the API, and the is authenticated, you can make an API call, um, have some kind of action that makes an API call to check for auth whenever they want to access a route. And that'll let them access data too. Because there's only so much you can do with the front end, like making sure they don't get to a route they're not supposed to. But the big thing is that they don't access data that they're not supposed to. So, um, which, you know, authentication needs to be checked on the front end and the back end. But yeah, I think that was all that I wanted to do so far with the router i'm gonna push this code and you know if, if any of you guys want to take a look at it um is there anything else no i think that's it everything else is you know most of the work was just in this one router file that's it all right let me stop the server and yeah remote is great. I'm sure especially having kids giving more flexibility. You're trying to containerize Nginx web server and Node.js application, but the config for Nginx is so hard. Um, I haven't used LightSail. I usually just use EC2 or um, Elastic Beanstalk to spin up EC2, I guess. Um, but yeah, Engin Nginx, are, are you using Docker? Like the Dockerized Nginx or just your regular Nginx config? Okay, so let me do git status. Right, everything looks good. Git add, git commit, dash m. Let's say, um, yeah, router off code from live stream on, what's today? August 24th. August 24th. Then I can make a longer message if I want. Um, added, let's say routes for off and non auth users um what else added routes i added routes um created off 
guard or for authenticated users and authorized user types. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Um, yeah, I think that's it. And then get push push dash you oh wait i haven't actually added a repository yet so let me go to my repository get the link and get remote add, oops, add origin paste that and get status get no, I already committed. So now let me do get push. No. Oh wait, origin. I'm spelling things wrong. Um, there we go. All right. Oops. Let's see. Refresh. Did it work? Yes. All right, I should update the README too, but yeah, that's basically the code from today. It's all there. I'll post it in um, Discord too. I prefer Trific to Nginx. Really? I guess because I did Apache a little bit. And then I realized Nginx was way simpler, so it seemed simple for me. But I haven't tried um, Trafic, so maybe I'll try that if I have to use it again. I'm just so used to using Nginx. Uh, also, you couldn't change config without restarting it. Yeah, you do have to restart it every time. Um, I don't know if that's your issue or not. Also, I haven't used LightSail. Um, is that just like Kubernetes or something. Yeah. I remember seeing it, but I can't remember actually what it does or how to configure it. All right. Yeah. Thanks so much for your time. I have to run to work and get ready for meetings and stuff. And I hope you all have a great day and I will see you on hopefully at least two streams next week. So take care everybody.